I want to talk about, these are my hands and feet, by the way, in case you haven't noticed. Um, I'm going to talk about thumbs and big toes. Now, I've been reading, um, in, in, in my own personal reading, I've been reading from Arcana Celestia, and, which is working through Genesis and Exodus, and I've come to the point where Aaron and his sons are dedicated as high priests. And there's this little section where, in Exodus, um, Moses takes the blood of the offering and he puts it on the right ear, so Aaron's right ear, his right thumb, and his right big toe. And it's a very strange sort of little ritual, okay? The right ear, the right thumb, and the right big toe. So I wanted to talk about the importance of thumbs and big toes. Because there's something we, I, I think we take for granted sometimes, and I notice this especially if you've ever, in, if you've ever injured your thumb, you suddenly notice how important it is. And I don't know whether you've had that experience. I certainly have. Many years ago, Pam and I used to play netball, and at one point I took a, a catch, and it was very awkward, and I injured my thumb, and I realised how important it was. So, first of all, I want to talk about it in terms of playing the piano. Now, playing the piano, we have a thing called a scale, which is eight notes. And of course, we only have four fingers. And in order to play it smoothly, our thumbs are very important. I'm going to show you. So here is me playing without my thumbs. Now, how do you play the next note smoothly? It's very hard. You can't get your fingers across each other, and you can't get your fingers underneath each other. You see? Very difficult. But add your thumb to that, and the thing is about a thumb is it passes underneath the hand in a way that you can cross your thumb over your fingers or under your fingers in a way you can't do with your other fingers. So, this is me doing it with my thumb this time. And my thumb, you see, tucks under and it makes it possible to play that scale smoothly. And again here, finger three crosses over the top of the thumb. So very, very useful. So. It's interesting for those who are interested in music, music history, apparently it was Johann Sebastian Bach who promoted the idea of using our thumbs to play the keyboard. Prior to that, we apparently we just used four fingers. But you can see how useful a thumb is. Now, think about gripping something. So here's me, I'm just out at the stairs, just out here, and I'm laying my hand on the stair banister but not using my thumb. And I've taken the photo from two different directions there. Now you can imagine yourself doing that, placing your hand on the banister, but you're not really gripping it, are you? You're not really holding it until you wrap your thumb around underneath it. It's a very important finger because of that ability to, to grip. Now, I'll also talk about my toes. <laughs> I have an uncle who, a number of years ago, um, had uh, blood problems to his legs, and he actually lost his big toe on one foot. Now, do you know what the effect of that was? Balance. He f balance. balance. He found it very difficult to balance. And you can imagine, I'm not going to take my socks off, but I'll take my shoes off. If you feel yourself walking, you'll notice how much weight you put on your big toe in particular as you walk. And you could try something out if you wanted to. You can try walking like this with your toes in the air and imagine how hard that is and difficult it is. So that, that's something like what my uncle experienced. Without the big toe, it becomes much more difficult to balance your, yourself as you walk. Now, one of the more macabre things that uh, Swedenborg mentioned when he's talking about this passage in, um, in Exodus is that apparently in ancient warfare, when, uh, when two armies would meet and they would fight, 
the victorious army, one of the ways they would punish the army that they defeated was by cutting off the thumb and cutting off the big toe. It is. But you can see why they did it, can't you? Because it actually reduces the use of actually the, the entire arm. You see? Because if you can't grip something, you can't grip a sword, for example, because you don't have your thumb, you can't go to war anymore. It was a way of disabling your, your opponents. Now, Swedenborg talks about the way, therefore, that the thumb then represents the whole arm. You see? And the big toe, the lowest thing, the thing that you think is least important, represents the power of the whole leg. And it's interesting. As I say, two things that you think are, oh, you know, they don't, what, don't matter, they're not particularly important. How important they are to us. I'll mention one more story. There's a lovely story in the Gospels uh, where Jesus is um, eating with his disciples and he takes his clothes off, he girds himself around his loins, it says, puts like a towel around his waist and he washes the disciples' feet. And, and Peter comes to him, you know, he come, well, he comes to Peter and, Pe and Peter says, oh no, you'll never wash my feet. And the Lord says, well, I need to wash your feet, otherwise you have no part in me. And Peter gets very enthusiastic. He says, well, don't worry about my feet. Do, the whole, do all of me. <coughs> and, and Jesus says, well, no, if you've had a bath, you only need to wash your feet. And our feet is our lowest level of life. It's our natural level of life. And that's where we pay our attention to what we're doing and, and how we interact with the world. And it's that washing of the feet and, and washing of our daily activity that's intended there. And it's just a lovely story. So Jesus is teaching us our important things for us to hang on to, for us to pay attention to, are those lowest activities of life, our day-to-day -day interactions with, with other people.